Welcome back to my channel. My name is Setson. Today, we're looking at how we can generate realistic AI voice from text. So we're going to be using this library right here, Kokui AI TTS. We're also going to be using Radio, which is just an open source Python package that allows you to quickly build a demo or web application for your machine learning model. Gradio is open source, but TTS is not open source. It can be used for research and educational purposes, but cannot be commercialized. Let me demo what we're trying to build. This interface here is provided by Gradio. That's why we need Gradio. So, hello, welcome to my channel. We can enter text and generate audio. So, if I submit, We can see right here the audio has been generated. We can play. Hello, welcome to my channel. Hello, welcome to my channel. And we can also go ahead and download this audio from this button right here with the download arrows. We're going to create our project. So I'm going to create mine on my desktop right here. So I'm going to right click new folder and then I'm going to name this TTS underscore tutorial. Or you can name it whatever you want. The next thing we need is to have the correct version of Python. And so let's look at our dependencies. Gradio says it requires Python 3.10 or higher. TTS requires us to have Python greater than or equal to 3.9 and less than 3.13. Confirm whether you have Python installed. So open your terminal so you can run Python, Python 3 or Py or Py 3. Any one of these commands should do for you. But for me, I'm sure it's Python dash dash version right there. And if I run, you can see the version of Python that I have 3.12.6. So I have the correct version, which is going to work with my dependencies. If in any case you do not have Python installed, you can head over to the Python official website. So Python download, you can see right here, python.org. It will take you to the Python official website right here. So you don't want to download the latest version. So you want to go here where it says Python releases by version number. Let's say we want to download 3.12.8. We will go ahead and click this and you can see the installers that you can download right here. So for those on Windows, you could go for this one. Mac OS right here. You can go ahead and do the download. And once you finish, you can go ahead and do the installation. It's quite easy and straightforward. But remember to check the box which says add Python to Python. Once we are sure that we have Python installed, we can now open this folder in a text editor of our choice. Yeah, I'm going to open this in Visual Studio Code. It's my preferred text editor, but you can use another text editor, but I would recommend using Visual Studio Code. If you do not have Visual Studio Code, you can search for VS Code right here. Go to the Visual Studio Code website, click on that. That, and then you can see the installers go ahead download the one for your platform and run through the installation once you're done you can go back to our folder which is on the desktop i want to right click this open in terminal i can just write code space dot i could also right click and go to show more options here it says open with code or you could open visual studio code and then locate the folder which we want to open i'm going to use this method right here so if i hit enter it's supposed to open this folder in visual studio code so you can see right here we have our folder Piece. Then we can go ahead and install our dependencies. I'm going to open the terminal in Visual Studio Code. That's why I recommend Visual Studio Code. So here you can go to view and then terminal. You can also open the terminal by using these icons up here. So you can toggle the terminal right here. So our terminal is down here. We can create a virtual environment. A virtual environment is an environment where you can separate your dependencies from those in the global environment because you don't want to have what we call dependency conflicts. The way we create a virtual environment, we use modules that are already built for us. There is one called VENV, which is a built-in module that you can use to create a virtual environment. There is also another one called virtual ENV. VENV comes with the Python installation, so we already have access to it. But for virtual ENV, we have to install that. So I'm going to run pip install virtual env like this if you run this command as you can see i already have it installed so it says requirement already satisfied but for you i'm sure e to run through the installation once you have this now we can be able to create our virtual environment using the specific version of python that we want you could have multiple versions of python installed on your computer and so you can select the one that you want to use so that's why we want to use virtual env so to create a virtual environment using virtual env we could just write virtual env 
And then we pass this dash P flag. This will specify the path to the Python that we want to use. In my case, I want to use a version of Python. Let me write Python right here. You can just search for Python. I want to use this Python 3.1 right here. I'm going to open this file location and then I want this right here, this kind of an executable. It's already selected. I can right click it and then go to its properties where it says target. I want to copy control C. I want to copy that path. Then I can click OK and then close this. Right here, after the P, I can paste that control V to paste the path to that Python executable. And then after that, I can then name my virtual environment. It's common practice for people to usually call it VENV or VERT or whatever name you prefer. And so we're going to go ahead and create this virtual environment. Okay, that was fast. You can see our virtual environment has been created right here, created virtual environment using 3.10.11. We can clear this inside your project directory. There's now a new directory called VENV. This is your virtual environment. This is where you're going to install your dependencies for the project. For us to be able to install our dependencies in this virtual environment, we need to activate this virtual environment. So the way we activate virtual environment windows, we can say VENV, which which is the name of our virtual environment backward slash scripts backward slash activate so if you hit enter you're supposed to be inside that virtual environment you can see the prefix right here tells us now we are running in a different environment which is our virtual environment if you are on a mac os or linux you should run source and then space and then venv which is the name of your virtual environment forward slash bin forward slash activate our next step is to install our major dependencies. The first dependency is this TTS right here. I'll leave a link in the description to the GitHub repo. And so you want to go to where it says installation. We have to run this command right here. So I'm going to write pip install coquee dash tts like that we can run this command right here. This will take a while. And so I'll get back when we are done. It looks like we're done. I'm going to clear this. We're going to install our second dependency, Gradio. To install Gradio is pip install Gradio. Let's go ahead and do that. Pip install Gradio. Okay, we're done also with Gradio. And so now we can go back to our TTS. So to check whether we have successfully installed TTS, we could run this command right here. So let's try and run that TTS dash dash list underscore models like that. This will also take long. All right, so it's, it looks like we have listed all the models that you can use. All these models will give you different voices and different languages. So you can see here, this is multilingual. The EN is for English. We have French, Chinese, Italian. I'm sure there are so many languages here. This tells us that we have access to that TTS model. Or we could use it in the command line or we can write a Python script. Using it in the command line is quite easy. You could just use TTS dash dash text. You specify the text. You specify the output file that you want. And so I'm going to copy this line right here. Clear this, paste this. We don't want this path right here. We just want a file. This text right here, we're gonna say text for this tutorial. And so let's see what happens if I run this. Just like that, you can generate your audio file. And so you can see right here in our main folder, we now have the audio file that was generated. Let's try and play this. Let me click on this and then play. Text for this tutorial. But of course, you might be a developer and you want to develop an application. We're going to create a file inside here. This is the exact code that we're going to write in our Python code. Main.py. So here we're going to import Torch from TTS dot api import capital letter tts then here we can create a device device and then we can say cuda if torch which is this torch that we imported here dot code dot is underscore available else we're going to use our cpu in quotation marks cpu 
to explain line six right here, we are either using our GPUs or we're going to use our CPUs. It's advisable to use your GPU. So GPUs are known to be faster for AI, machine learning, etc. I'm going to create a function because we want to use a function. So we can say create underscore audio. You can name this function whatever you want. And then it's going to take in some kind of text. We can then assign this to some kind of text. I'm going to say my underscore text. I'm going to create a variable for this this up here my underscore text and there you can write any text of your choice this example audio and then down here we're going to create a tts object so tts from this tts right here inside these brackets can specify the model let's list the models again so that we can choose one of those models tts dash dash list models okay our listed models i think this one will work for us model 21 so we're going to choose this one which is an english version so you could choose any other language so let me copy this model right here this is what you want to copy you can then paste it right here in quotation mark we can then say dot two in those brackets we can pass in our device which is this device we created up here we can convert to a file this tts so we can say tts dot tts underscore to underscore file and so this takes in the text that you want to convert so we can say text is our text we also need a speaker for this particular mode so i'm going to say speaker and then you can specify the speaker right here let me comment this out for now and just print the speaker so i could say tts dot so that we can get the list of speakers and then we can use it. Let me save this and call this function immediately. So I'm going to say create audio right here. And so it's going to print the list of speakers right here. Let me save and run this file and see what happens. Let me clear this and then run python main.py. Run this. So it prints out the list of speakers you can see right here. It's a list. All right, let's try this P306. So we can pass in right here. So I'm going to uncomment this. And then in quotation marks, you can say P 306 that's the speaker that we want for this particular module and then we can specify the output file underscore path yeah, i'm going to create another folder here let me create another folder i'm going to call it audio for our audio file so i'm going to say in quotation marks and then audio in this current folder is an audio directory and output underscore audio dot wave I'm sure we should just return this right here. Let me save this. Let me run and see. So Python main.py. Looks like nothing happened, but if you look inside our audio right here, you can see there's a file that has been generated there. So yeah, it's working. So let me double click and play this. Let me try and hear that. This is sample audio. This is sample audio. So yeah, it's working. You can see right here. After we are finished with this, we no longer need to call this right here. We can now use Gradio to create a user interface, which we can then use. So let me go to Gradio right here. So we need to import Gradio as GR. We could import it just as Gradio. So we could do the same inside our file, import radio as yeah. Of course, we have already installed Gradio at the beginning of this tutorial. To use Gradio, we're going to create what we call an interface. So I'll call it an interface. And then we need to call GR, which is this right here, dot interface in capital letter I. And then we pass in the required arguments here. The first one is fn, which is short for function. We pass in the function for this particular interface, which is our create underscore audio. This is the function which we're going to run for this interface. And then we can specify the input and the output. So our input is going to be text. So we can say gi dot text area. We want a text area. So label is going to be enter text so it's going to create a text area this is going to be the label you see on that text area so this here and then this right here we also have to pass in the output output is in plural inputs outputs i'm getting all this from the documentation you can see how they did it right function and then inputs and then outputs there are so many ways of writing this thing right here you could use just text and then here we need gr dot they have an audio you can pass in the title on that audio box so it's going to be a label output audio 
we can then go ahead and launch this. So we need to say interface dot launch. It's a function that you call on your interface. After you create the interface object, you need to launch it. So with this done, we can save this and then go to my terminal. I'm going to run this. You can see right here, it says it's running on local URL. Click on that link. It's supposed to open in the browser. And so you can see right here, this is our text area that we created. We can enter text here. And then our output is going to be output audio as we specified right here. This label output audio is the one we can see here, top left corner. Let's try this and see whether it's working. You can subscribe and leave a like to this channel. Let, let me submit. You can see our audio. Let's listen to our audio. You can subscribe and leave a like to this channel. You can also go ahead and download this so you could play around with the speakers. So you could have, let's say, 225, for instance. So we can go back here. You can subscribe and leave a like to this channel. Also, remember to leave a comment. Okay, I'm adding extra information and then submit this. It's going to regenerate with a different speaker, of course, this time. We have it. Subscribe and leave a like to this channel. Also remember to leave a comment. Okay, so you can try around the different speakers and if you're satisfied, then now you can go ahead and download. We are done. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Remember to hit that subscribe button, leave a like. Hope to see you in my next tutorial. For now, I'm out. Cheers.